Hello everyone and welcome to my current events topic. My name is Jordan Chow and I'll be talking about being involved in developing weapons for war. So just an introduction. Being involved in developing weapons for war is very important for the protection of our country. I think it's a pretty complex and controversial job because, I mean, you're making weapons that are produced to potentially cause harm and mass destruction, and we're humans. And doing that, it may question our morality and, and you know, why we did what we did. However, these weapons are also what protects us. You know, we make these weapons for national security, to uh, make sure that everyone in, within the country is safe and I guess those are kind of the two sides as to looking at you know making weapons for war so societal issues one issue that comes up is the arms race um, essentially when a country starts to develop a weapon that is using advanced technology, it's very successful. It kind of makes other countries want to copy the same thing and possibly even make it better. This causes an issue because for one thing, we shouldn't be competing in making better weapons, which ends up using a lot of resources which that could be used for something else. And it could also create tension between the two the, the two respective countries. So, I mean, that's one issue. And another issue would be proliferation risks. Um, by making these weapons and, you know, assuming that they're very advanced and powerful, it's, we really don't, it's very risky to, to have these. Because if one day these weapons fall into the into someone with the wrong hands, our world could be put it simply could be doomed. Um, a lot of bad things can happen with the wrong person using these weapons who's in charge, and we really don't want that to to happen. And economic impacts, a lot of resources actually goes into you know creating developing these weapons you got to take time to research a lot of funding to put up these projects that are used to create weapons of mass destruction you got to gather materials and it's a very lengthy process that uses a lot of resources and money and a lot of people don't really see it as as necessary to spend this much um on you know weapons while well, it could be used for other things all right so the pros and the cons the pros is that it strengthens national security i mean that's one main reason why we even have weapons to begin with we want to make sure that our country's safe and everyone is is protected and you know no one really tries to attack our country invade and response to threats kind of goes hand in hand with strengthening national security. Um, we don't even want a, a war or a conflict to happen to begin with. We want to stop it before it ever starts. And another pro is that it creates strategic alliances. So essentially when a country has a very a very strong military, you know, advanced weaponry, ar and, uh, a lot of utility, and, and their armory is very advanced as well. It kind of persuades other countries to form an alliance where they're kind of saying, yeah, we don't want to be an enemy of you. And that's, you know, what, what, that's a good thing because we're not, tr we're ultimately not trying to start a war. And we want to make the world a peaceful place and not 
use these weapons unless we really have to. And the cons is that the use of weapons can have a negative effect on the environment. I mean, to make sure these weapons work, you got to test them. And by testing them, you know, you create harmful effects like pollution, habitat destruction, and, you know, even long-term impact of uh, radioactive materials and chemical agents. And another con is that there are psychological effects that are formed within the individuals making the weapons. You know, they're making these weapons knowing that they can potentially take many lives, but it's for the, you know, for the safety of our country. However, we're still humans. We still have morals. And it's for a lot of people, it's going to be hard to live with doing something like this, creating weapons to cause harm and mass destruction. Now, the intended and unintended consequences. Obviously, there's national security enhancement. That That's intended. That's very obvious. We want to make sure that our country is very strong we're doing all this to protect ourselves protection always comes first and strategic deterrence we kind of want to make a country wants to make a a weapon designed for war and presumably mass destruction but that is to sort of stop other countries from making uh, weapons to, you know, maybe counter ours, maybe make it better than ours. And we, you know, that it should, it, it's basically saying that with our, with our weapon, it should scare the other uh, countries and, you know, make them not motivated to Try to try to compete with that country, and alliance strengthening. Um, you know, we want countries to be to get along with each other, and by creating weapons for war, we there will be alliances that are forming because it's kind of saying like before. We don't want to be an enemy of you. We kind of want to side with you. And that's kind of our goal with, you know, most of the, the world. We all want to be, be on one side, not have, you know, three different sides fighting each other. And that's kind of, that's kind of what they're aiming at. And the unintended consequences is the arms race, um, which was kind of a result of the strategic deterrence of what they were trying to do. Um, countries are competing with each other. Um, take, I guess, North Korea and, uh, and the United States or United States and Russia, you know, the nukes, nuclear bombs. The countries are competing with each other to have the better weapon. And civilian casualties, this is a big one. Um, you know, when people are using weapons in war, they're not. They're obviously not aiming for civilians. They're aiming for the hostiles, the enemies, right? But it's very hard to to control who gets hit and who doesn't. If the if the enemies that are being targeted are with civilians or are near them and within the same proximity, civilians can die, and it's it really isn't preventable and another unintended consequence is environmental damage this could be you know destroying property destroying houses destroying buildings and that could even lead to um, causing civilian casualties so future aspects and developments so I got a few quotes from a few articles Today, efforts to enact a total ban on lethal autonomous weapons long demanded by human rights activists are now being supported by 30 countries. So in the future, 
most of the weapons, there's a lot of talk about weapons being um, mostly uh, artificial intelligence, AI, uh, meaning that people aren't really, people aren't going to control them at all. And that these weapons should, you know, have, have advanced technology like facial recognition. They see who the enemy and who isn't the enemy by scanning them. And then based on that, they, they either attack them or they don't. Um, and another quote saying, the technology will also help reduce collateral damage and prevent civilian deaths, which we might have perceived as hostile in past engagements. So this goes back to what I was saying before, civilian deaths and you know them being within the same proximity of uh, actual enemies. And it's kind of hard to not target them. Well, according to this, to this statement, with facial recognition and, you know, other advanced technology within the AI weapons, they may, they're going to be able to tell who, who is the right target and who should be targeted, who shouldn't be targeted. All right. So my scenario and ethical dilemma. Anne has been offered an opportunity to move to a section in her company where her new position would be able to help anti-personnel bombs. Currently, Anne is in a section that does not develop anti-personnel bombs. This offers a big promotion and recognition of her talent. Anne is torn as she does not think that helping to make anti-personnel bombs is a good thing to do. But if she does not accept the assignment, she will most likely not be offered another promotion. Is it ethical for Anne to accept the new position? Okay, and these are my citations. Thank you for listening to my current events topic speech.